I'm gonna check the setup of a couple of my machines to see if they can give me really accurate square cross cuts. I like the technique that I'm gonna demonstrate here because it's really quick and simple and it gives accurate results. The most common way to check uh, the squareness of a cut is just to use a square. Take a good square, put it up against the board, look for gaps. This looks pretty good. But if we're looking for even more accuracy, there are other ways we can check our setup. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make two cuts on this saw. I'm just gonna establish an edge here. And then I'm gonna take this board and flip it over like the page of a book. And I'm going to cut the same edge, aim for a maybe half an inch, but from the other side. Basically, the technique here is to measure the width of this piece of wood at each end. If the width is the same, then the cut is square. On the condition that the edge of the board against the fence is straight and the fence is straight. As long as those two things are both straight, the difference in the width at the two ends of this cut piece will give you an indication of how accurate the saw is currently tuned up. I'm gonna use an inexpensive caliper just to measure this. At one end, I'm getting 0.475 inches. At the other end, I'm getting 0.482. So that's a difference of seven one thousandths of an inch. And we can use that difference to calculate what the actual angle of the blade is. But this is best illustrated if I exaggerate things a bit. So let's start over with the blade intentionally a little bit off. So I've set my saw now at four degrees and I'm gonna redo the test pretending that I think it's square. So this piece is just a scrap. I did that so that I could get one end that was cut this way. And now I'm going to flip over like the page of a book and I'm gonna do my other cut. Okay, so now I have this test piece. And again, we can say that if this board is the same width at both ends, then the cuts are square. But in this case, because I deliberately did this wrong, it's much easier to see that it's clearly not square. Now let's calculate how much. I'm gonna to need to measure both ends. At one end, I'm getting 0.584, and at the other end, 1.617. So the difference between those two measurements is 1.033 inches. And that would be the error in the squareness of this cut if we were trying for a square cut, uh, which we're pretending that we are. However, we are counting the error twice because we made two cuts and it was wrong in both cuts. And so what we need to do is divide that by two. So the actual error uh, in the cut is 0 0.5165 inches, which doesn't really tell us very much uh, unless we take into account the length of this piece or rather the width of the original board. Because what's important to consider here is that what we have is an error of around half an inch over this length. If the board were wider and the cut were therefore longer, then that error would just keep getting bigger. And what we really care about is the angle of the blade. The width of the original board is 8.026 inches. And that gives us the two numbers we need to calculate the angle of the blade. And if we go back to our trigonometry class from high school, the trig function we need here is called tangent. I'll explain just a little bit more in the description, but most folks don't care much about the math here and you don't need to know any of it in order to use this technique. And if we grab a calculator and calculate that, what we get is 3.682 degrees, which confirms pretty close the setting that I put the saw on. Now, the only reason I did all that is to just demonstrate how the technique works. The original test piece had an error of seven one thousandths of an inch over the same distance. But again, we need to remember that that 0 0.007 actually double counts the error. So what we really need is three and a half thou. We can do the same trig calculation 
using those numbers. So if we were speaking of this in terms of a 90 degree cut, what we ended up with was 90.024 degrees. So whenever we get uh, this kind of result, when we're checking the accuracy of a machine, the question is, is it accurate enough? The answer is always that it depends on the situation. I currently do not have a situation where I need better accuracy for this cross cut than 90.024 degrees. So I recently tuned up this saw. It looks like I did a decent job. But when we're talking about cross cut saws like this, there's actually a couple more questions when we have concerns about accuracy. One of those questions is when we change to a different miter angle and then try and return to a square cut, how well does it reset back to where we wanted it to be? As it happens, we can test that now because I've changed the angle. I'm gonna change it back to a zero degree cut and do the test again and see if I get something similar to what I got on the first test. Like most compound miter saws, this one has a stop right at zero. So I'm relying on the quality of the saw to land back where I wanted it. And then I'm gonna lock it down. And once again, I'm gonna need to start with a reference edge. So I'm going to cut off a scrap, flip the page over like a book and do the other cut. And now I need to check the width of this scrap at each end. 0 0.520, 0 0.513. So once again, I'm getting a deviation of seven one thousandths of an inch, which is the same as I got on the first test piece, which I'm frankly delighted with. The saw returned to the same spot it was before. When we're talking about the accuracy of a cross-cut saw, we don't just care how square is one cut, we wanna know how consistent the saw is. If we make several or a bunch of cuts in a row, are they all gonna be square? This accounts for things like slop in the design of the machine or the blade flexing and deflecting. So I'm gonna gather a bit more data here and then I'm gonna do some results and comparisons. So I've brought the same piece of wood over here to the radial arm saw, and I'm gonna do the same test here and see how it turns out. So I did four tests with my sliding compound miter saw, and I got deviations of six, 10, five, and 11 and those are in thousandths of an inch. Over here at the radial arm saw, I did four tests and I got deviations of 16, 17, 15, and 14. I can make two observations here. One, my radial arm saw is not tuned as accurately as my compound miter saw is because in general, its deviations are bigger. The second observation I can make is that the results from the radial arm saw are a bit more consistent. The difference between the largest and smallest deviation is only three thou, where over here, it's actually six thou. Whether that distinction matters or not, again, I can't say. Those of us who like to chase accuracy in the woodshop sometimes need to remind ourselves not to get silly. Here's an example. Earlier, when I measured the deviation of this test piece, it was seven. Now, when I measure it as carefully as I can, I get six. But we're talking about a thousandth of an inch. What I need to remember is that I'm very close to exceeding the available precision, which is fine. It doesn't count as silly until I start to believe things matter when they don't. One other thing I wanna check here at the radial arm saw is how well does this saw return to square after I do a miter, just as I did on the other saw. Radial arm saws have a, a bit of a reputation for not returning to square after you change the miter angle. Some people actually, once they get their radial arm saw set up with uh, exactly the way they want it, they never change it because they worry that they won't be able to get it back to square. So I'm just gonna briefly change the angle of this blade to 45 degrees or so, and then I'm gonna change it back, letting it come back to its stop, and then I'm gonna redo the same test. <laughs> 
So I get a deviation again of 14 thou. So again, I'm not saying whether a 14 thou deviation across an eight inch cut is material or not, but what I can say is that the saw returned to pretty darn close to the same spot it did before, and that's good. I certainly didn't invent this technique. I believe it's fairly commonly known, although I don't see it talked about all that often. And it certainly doesn't seem to have the fan base that the five cut method has for checking the squareness of a cross cut sled on a table saw. And it doesn't seem to have a catchy name, although I've come to think of it as the page flip method. 